Good evening, Titans. This is Mr. Simpson again. Hope your uh, quiz today went great for you. And we're going to take it to the next level tonight. And we're going to be solving absolute value equations. So look over what you will learn. Before we actually solve absolute value equations, it's real important that we recognize some properties about absolute values. First of all, it says that the absolute value of any number will always be greater than zero, which, that, which means, example, if I have the absolute value of 2, well, that's going to equal a positive 2. The absolute value is always positive. It takes whatever number's inside and makes it a positive number. So if it's already positive, it just remains positive. And the absolute value of a negative 2 would also equal a positive 2. So absolute value always takes the number and makes it a positive. Now a couple other properties is, for example, the absolute value of a negative a is equal to the absolute value of a. And that just kind of shows you the absolute value of a negative 2 was equal to the absolute value of a positive 2 because they're both equal to 2. And then 3 and 4 talk about if I have the absolute value of a times b, or if I take the absolute value of a times the absolute value of b, I would get the same result. Now, to help us solve equations, this is the rule that we'll use. If the absolute value of ax plus b is equal to c, c must be greater than or equal to zero, then we have two equations we have to solve. We have to solve ax plus b equals c and ax plus b equals a negative c. Because remember, if it's the absolute value is equal to, say, 3, and we just have a variable in here, well, what numbers have an absolute value of 3? Well, 3 would have an absolute value of 3, but so would a negative 3. So when we rewrite these equations, we have to make sure we set what's inside the absolute value equal to the number given, but then also what's inside the absolute value set equal to the opposite of that number. And then lastly, and again, let me erase this a little bit here. This last part is real important. If we take a look at this last part right here, if the absolute value is set equal to a negative number, so if I have the absolute value of x is equal to a negative 5, there is no number that I can plug in for x that will make this ever equal a negative 5, and we would have no solution. So let's like take a look at a couple of examples here. This first one, again, understand that anytime you're solving an absolute value equation, you're going to be breaking this up into two separate equations. One, what's inside the absolute value equal to 6, so exactly the way it's given to us without the absolute value. But then, what's inside the absolute value equal to the opposite of that number. And now we have to solve each one of these. So here we're going to add 4. We get x is equal to 10. We add 4. And we get x equals a negative 2. And if we were to graph these, as they ask, we'd graph it on a number line. A negative 2 would be here. I'm going to put 0 in. And then 10 here. And all we would do is put dots on the negative 2 and the 10. If you take a look at B, you got to be excited about this one because when you look at it, it's already set equal to a negative number. And based on the rule that we talked about on the previous slide, when the absolute value, which always must be positive, is set equal to a negative number, it can't be solved. The answer is a no solution. <laughs> 